there and thank you for taking time to tune into this Christmas message. This is the second of six that we're producing over the next few days and they are in place of our normal carol service which due to the Covid restrictions we're not able to hold at the hall this time. This is from the Gospel Hall members Upper Hill Street in Coventry. The carol that we've just listened to Apologies if you felt the recording was poor. The quality wasn't at all professional, we admit that. It was taken at one of our carol services several years ago and we never ever had any intention of playing it, but that's how things have changed over this past year. What a year it's been. But using that carol and our scripture reading, I want us just to leave with you a short Christmas message. Please follow on with the others and uh, get the whole Christmas message over the six videos. For our scripture reading today, we're going to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 through to 35. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. We know as always that God is pleased to bless to us the reading of his holy word. As we think today of Mary, the chosen one to bring in to this world the person of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. I want us to just think of her name and take each letter of her name as an acrostic just to hang our thoughts on for today. So as we think of the letter M of Mary, I want us to think of the manner of the salutation. She might well have asked, why me? It's a question that many of us ask, isn't it? Why me? But we'll see later in today's story that Mary was really privileged to be the one that should bring into the world such a one as this, that we celebrate his coming at this Christmas season. She must have had an awful shock that day when she was going around her normal household duties, all of a sudden to be visited by an angel, not a dream of an angel, by actually an angel in person. And no doubt she would have fallen aback uh, in awe and amazement at such an event and to think that the message that would come from the angel would have such an effect upon her and upon the whole world since then. The manner of the salutation, Hail thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Absolutely essential truth for us to appreciate is that the one that was going to bring in the Lord Jesus into the world was to be without sin. Therefore, he had to be born of a virgin. Had that not been so, then the one that she would bring into the world would be touched and tainted by sin, just as you and I are. And that would make the ability of him to be a saviour absolutely impossible and therefore so essential that the one would be a virgin, as the prophet Isaiah had prophesied some 600 years before his birth. Let us go to the letter A, and there I've just put the word assurance. And there were 
two things that the angel brought to Mary that she most desperately needed. As I've said already, the visit of the angel must have been that that really made her terrified. I would be. And the first word that she needed to hear from the angel was the word, or the words, fear not. Fear not. That saying comes again in the Christmas story, and no doubt we'll hear about it in one of our later broadcasts, but you'll remember it to the shepherds. They had an angelic visitation, a big one, and they needed that word as well, to fear not. But then again, as we think about Mary, that word that comes to her of assurance not only tells her to fear not but she t tells us something about the fact that she's been chosen of God to perform this special act thou hast found favour with God so Mary the vehicle through whom the Lord Jesus came had that wonderful assurance I wonder whether you're looking for assurance this Christmas time perhaps over the past year you're thinking everything has just been chaos not knowing what's coming from day to day perhaps your job has gone perhaps your health has gone perhaps loved ones have gone it's been a year with tragedies on one side or another and maybe your experience is perhaps something like what mary felt when the angel came in she was terrified but what an assuring word those words of god through the angel fear not and we can have that message at this christmas time as well from the saviour that came through mary's womb that we need not fear more of that later that brings us thirdly then to the letter r and i put over that letter the result of the birth and i've extracted a line from the carol that beautiful carol silent night that we had at the start of our video today that told us something of the reason for the birth of the Lord Jesus and what it was going to do it was indeed the dawn of redeeming grace and in our scripture reading we thought of the second R in that sentence a king reigning so the one that was born in humble circumstances in the outside place in the manger as our later stories will show us do tune into them the one that came in such humble guise came for a reason he came to redeem that means to buy back to God to restore into fellowship with God that which had been lost through sin and there was only one saviour that could come to fulfill that great task of bringing men and women and boys and girls that have gone away from God like the prophet Isaiah said gone away like lost sheep all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and lost sheep need to be found and lost sinners need to be found and that's where the Redeemer comes in to buy back to bring back that which has been lost and the birth of the Lord Jesus was to that end what a wonderful wonderful story the Christmas story is so the result of the birth was that a Redeemer had come but that wasn't in our scripture readings but what was in our scripture readings and the promise to Mary was that the one that she was going to bring into this world was going to be a king who would reign, reign upon the throne of his father David and establish a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom. And doesn't this world need right government and right rule? And you know, one day it will have a king reigning in righteousness, in peace and in equity. When the one that was born king of the Jews and rejected will come and set up his kingdom and establish his reign for a thousand years in this world. Read about it in the Bible. And if you want to know more about these subjects, please do get in touch with us. We'll be more than happy to share with you from the scriptures more about this. But the result of the birth, the Redeemer has come and we can anticipate in the future that same one. Firstly, at his coming despised and rejected but coming a second time to set up his kingdom to reign in righteousness and peace and in equity so that then leaves us with the letter Y 
and I've just put there a uh, yearning to know. Mary had got lots of questions. You can imagine she had. The first big question was, well, how was it all going to happen? Here was Mary, probably just a young girl, and her age, we don't know exactly, but she was engaged to be married to Joseph, but she's, she's not married at this point. And to hear the news that she's going to have a child when she's not married would have been a huge shock to her. And naturally, she wants to know, how is it going to happen? And she asks the angel, how can this be, seeing I know not a man? And she gets the explanation from the angel, how it's going to happen. And you know, there's one thing that I want us to think about as we close this video today. It was absolutely essential that the one that would bring in the Lord Jesus into the world would be a virgin. That is what the prophet had said. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Mary gets the answer from the angel that it's all going to be achieved through the operation of the Holy Spirit who would come upon her and place into her womb the Christ child that would be born to be the Son of God. And that answers the next question, yearning to know how and yearning to know who is this person that's going to be born? And the angel said, he will be the Son of God. We would pray that this Christmas time you might receive him and to know him, the one that came into the world and he came for you. He came for me. And that's the wonder of the story. In closing then, as we've thought of the promise of the coming of the Lord Jesus through the Virgin Mary, and we thought of the letter R, the reason for his coming to redeem, we must remind you again that he was born in order to die, and at Calvary's cross 33 years later, he there died bearing the judgment of our sin, that through repentance and faith in him, we can have that peace that Mary was assured of, those words of fear not, and may it be your experience this Christmas time. We have used images available free of charge from Free Bible Illustrations. The website is there. There is a great resource if you want to go and look at them for yourself. We're very grateful that they're made available. This is number two of six, and trust you'll join in on the following days for the remaining four. They are all available on our website, www.upperhillstreet.org, and there's a whole lot more material there for children and adults. I close by wishing you all a very happy and blessed Christmas, and see you again soon. Bye-bye.